my neighbor, he's from, uh, he's from Fun, which is the big island in the center of Denmark, and he grew up in, a, in an apple orchard. He said when he was a kid, he could pluck uh, 15 uh, types of apple from outside his house. And, uh, and the orchard, they would, they would uh, sell uh, over 30 species of apple. And today, and after he told the story, I was in the supermarket the same evening to buy apple for the breakfast. And uh, I can buy one type of apple, and it's uh, from Argentina. Uh, I inherited from my mother an old Scandinavian cooking book. And I was looking into it as a book, which, which I think is from the 40s. Um, and it's, uh, uh, it was amazing to see that many ingredients I couldn't find. For how long this offer hasn't been there? Where did, why did it disappear or so? You know, where did it go? What happened to the countryside? Very big farm in terms of land with very little people in it. And in this big piece of land, it's all the same color. It's all the same thing, corn, 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 corn. The countryside became some sort of factory. You could make an analogy in, in between, you could make a comparison in between the landscape and the city. And uh, this entire notion of productivity. We were saying, okay, in this part of the city, I only make housing, you know. and the housing should be in a line so I can put a crane and then build it in one go. It was really incredibly efficient. We look at this place today and say, oh, how much it likes of life. There's huge efforts now to try to redevelop this part of the city. Why can't we imagine the same for, for the countryside? If you think about this extensive farming, I, would I wouldn't like to live in there. There's something that we call Utkans Denmark, the outer edge of Denmark. It's part of the country which are literally falling out of the economy. They're starting to lose people because what's the horizon there? What are you gonna do? Are you gonna live in a factory? We were quite shocked about some of the discoveries here. We discovered that 62% um, of the land area of Denmark is used today for agriculture. Most of this land area is used for crops to feed the pig industry. But 90% of these pigs are exported outside Denmark. I mean, this is the biggest, I think Denmark is the biggest exporter of pigs in the world. It used to take two years in, you know, in, in 1900 to, to grow a pig for being slaughtered. Today it takes one and a half months. You say six or seven times faster. Imagine if we would uh, sort of gain, gain so much more weight in so much less time. You know, it's almost grotesque. Or it's very grotesque. But also, it grows with more tits and more ribs, you know, and, and, and it even able to, to give birth to more kids than it can actually feed itself. So when 18 come out and there's only 14 T's, you know, it's not rocket science, four of them die. So what's a, a result of ramping up uh, this pig industry and this high productivity and super optimization? If we take the environmental costs, this is on the increase. The CO2, it, it means to transport uh, and export these foodstuffs all over the world is phenomenal. 
Do we really want to keep fueling this if what we're left with is a Danish landscape kind of devoid of variety, devoid of diversity? If it produces more CO2, if it produces less quality, you lose something. So what's the gain? We're getting more and more you know, efficient in producing. But in the same time, there's less and less job. And then it represents less and less of the overall economy of, uh, of Denmark. Is it actually correct then that we're using most of the land of Denmark uh, for exporting? When there's an economy driver, it's on, it's on the way down. I was recently in Bornholm and heard there of a farmer who's, uh, who uh, inherited his, uh, his pig farm from his uh, father. And uh, when he took it on, the farm had thousands of pigs. And he thought, well, okay, I'm going to downscale and let them roam the forest. <coughs> this then uh, alone gave him a very different type of pig. Uh, a pig which took longer to get to the 90 kilos, but his qualities highly increased. And then he's making this as an offer, and this is the, the very, very clever bit for a very new market he's conscious he's entering. Where he can ask, do you want to put this on the menu and tell your customers about exactly how this pig is raised? What kind of taste do you want? But here's the interesting part. In the old model, based on high quantities, the farmer needed to produce thousands of pigs per year because his profit margin is only one krona per kilo. But in the new model, based on high quality, the consumer pays a bit more, but the farmer increases his profit margin dramatically. So to achieve the same profit, you can have a lot fewer pigs using much less land area. And then this is where the larger map comes into play. Uh, what then would happen if we keep that, that money coming in, not by making the amount of pigs we make now, but changing the quality. We have a, 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 a flat economy. So right now we, we, we don't see growth. In this project is actually looking at the alternative to quantitative growth. Uh, you know, why don't we get much more out for, uh, of what we have here? We say we can achieve a, achieve a good economy by selling less pig of higher quality. This means we release a serious amount of square meters. We can then decide what we want to grow on this land. So this is what I'm imagining, is that suddenly this really big field of corn could you know, become something totally else, you know, where, where things start to work together, you know. You see pigs running in the forest, eating mushrooms, and while, you know, uh, someone is harvesting honey. Is it possible to imagine that? It's a bit romantic, but... Uh, well, why shouldn't we be romantic, you know, that's also... <laughs> Uh, maybe, you know, maybe it's maybe time for that, you know, to be a bit more emotional about, about many things. But uh, no, and it's no is not romantic in a sense that we're really looking into f real figures. The inc income, dispensable income in the 50s is of course much lower. We see very little difference on the, the amount spent on the food, but our in in income has increased three times. What do we do with our money? On one hand, food it didn't really increase much. And on the top of that, you know, a big part of this three times more money we get, we also use it for uh, comfort, you know, for things that 
you know, computers, uh, music, traveling. Maybe in that sense, you could say food became less and less relevant. Is it a question of supply? Is it a question of choice? Is it a question of culture? What is the real measure of growth if we're pumping into an industry to sell elsewhere? What is left of natural resource? Why don't we then revert rather than giving a big mass of dubious lower quality to the rest of the world? Is that also a responsible position to take? Maybe there's actually something else to produce. Maybe we could produce diversity. What if we would actually rethink it?